Today I'm going to share with you 12 ways to get your little one to like more vegetables. All these tips are backed in research and I can't wait to share them with you. All right, let's do this. My name is Lindsay and welcome to the Little Foundations channel where I help parents and caregivers to create healthy habits for their babies from the very start. Let's jump right in with number one. I want you to keep it real and I want you to keep your baby really involved. So that means you want your baby to be a part of every step of this. We don't want the food to just show up on the table or show up on their tray. We want them to see every step in between. So we want them to go to the garden with us or go to the supermarket. We want them to be a part of putting the food away or washing it or prepping it. When they're older, they can be a part of the cooking and the serving and the cleaning up. If your baby is a little bit older and they can understand things like, let's count for four potatoes or let's look for a biggest broccoli. They can help you with those things where it doesn't feel that they have to eat it, but they're still involved in all the food activities. They can help you hold the food in the cart or wash it off in the sink. All of this helps for them to see the real foods that you keep in your house that they will be exposed to as they grow up. Number two is have them out. Have cut up pieces of vegetables around all the time. That means that when you're cooking and you're prepping for food and your baby might be asking for a snack, you will have some prepped vegetables right there. If your baby's hungry and they see it out, it makes it a little bit more exciting. It can be a snack that's right out on the counter that they might want to grab. The other part of this is that we want to make it a non-negotiable, that as your baby gets older, we all have a little bit of everything that's served. So if you have some vegetables with your meal, you want to make sure that they are safe for your baby, but you're going to give your baby at least a little bit of what the rest of the family is eating. If you start this habit from the very beginning, they will know that this is to be expected. It doesn't mean they have to eat it. It means that it's going to live on their tray and that they can play with it and explore it if they want. This goes to number three, build things. Play with your food. I know that some people don't want their babies to play with food, and we worry that if they play too much that they're not going to actually eat. But really, it's the reverse. If we let our babies play with food and get exposed and get messy and experiment, they'll actually be more comfortable around the food and more interested in it. If it's new and it feels off limits to touch it, it's going to make them a little bit more hesitant. So this can be a really fun activity, especially as you're introducing new foods. You can make shapes and letters. You can spell their name. You can count. You can write numbers or build houses, stack up foods in a tower. You can make funny faces on their tray with different shapes of food. There are so many things that you can do to take the pressure off so that they don't feel that they have to eat it, but it's going to feel so familiar that they're going to want to pop that in their mouth on their own. This goes into number four, cook them. Cook your vegetables. Many vegetables will have to be cooked for your baby in the beginning to keep them safe. So don't be afraid to cook them, to put salt and seasonings on them. When the food tastes better, your baby's going to be more interested to try it. But if the food is too hard for them, it can potentially be unsafe. So in the beginning, when they're still learning to eat, we're going to make sure that we're cooking the food and keeping it soft enough for them to manage. We're going to be cooking for the whole family, so you might as well put salt and pepper and all your regular seasonings on there. Your baby can have those things, and they will like things that taste even better. Number five is no tricks. Many parents and caregivers will ask me, how can I sneak in more vegetables? And here's my thought on that. I don't like the word sneak. I want your babies to eat the food that you eat. And so yes, there will be many things that will have vegetables baked or cooked into them. They will be a part of the meals that you eat. And so it's great for your baby's body to be exposed to those foods. It's going to be mixed in and it's going to give them great experience and the flavor of those vegetables that we're trying to introduce. So you have those great recipes where we can include vegetables in there. But I don't like sneaking in that way where we're maybe having some food covered in applesauce or maybe we're sneaking it in their mouth when they're distracted. We don't want to lose our baby's trust. And that is one quick way for them to go, hold on, I want to be in control of my food. So yes, that is important that we have that great rich diet of lots of things that you and your family are eating. But we're not going to sneak it in that way where we're covering it with something we're doing it when they're not looking. So keep the food real and also be honest with them. All right, tip number seven on how to get your baby to like more vegetables is actually for you to play it cool. I know we desperately want our baby to be healthy and have a varied diet of many different foods. 
but we can't wear our emotions on our face when we're disappointed if they don't like something. We want to give your baby a healthy relationship with food. And if we start to look disappointed or angry, or if we start to negotiate with them, we can head down the wrong path. I don't negotiate with babies. Oh, do this or have one bite. I also don't use the word just. Just try it or just have a bite or it's just broccoli. Those words and that negotiating back and forth can really start us down the wrong path. It's okay if your baby doesn't like it at first. I'm going to follow these tips and we're going to keep at it. This goes right into number eight. Don't force your baby. Again, all of this is so that they can make the decision of when they want to eat it. If we continue to show them in a happy and positive way, they're more willing to eat it. If we force them or negotiate or battle every time we have a meal, it's going to make them more nervous, more controlling, and even pickier. I know you want the best for your baby, but promise me that you're not going to force it. Number nine, talk about foods. We want to talk about food in a positive way, not in hopes that they're going to eat it in that second, but we can read books and talk about food and talk about the superpowers that vegetables and fruits have. We can talk about why they're good for us and how they help our eyes or our bones or our brain. There are so many things that we can do to talk about vegetables in a happy way and talking about food in the market and in your home will help them to be more comfortable. It's exciting for them to think about that there are foods that have these great powers. Well, again, we're not forcing it. We are introducing the topic. Number 10 is what I call tasting time. There are probably things that you and other people in your house don't like to eat all the time, or you're still learning to like those. And so as your baby gets older, it's important for them to see that it's okay if we don't like everything, that we can still learn to play with it and explore and taste it every once in a while. So a routine that we have in our house is that we like to go to farmer's markets and stores that sell unique foods that we don't usually see. We like to try new fruits and vegetables from other countries. We eat them together and see what we like and see things that maybe we're still learning to like. It's important for your baby, especially as they get older, to see that it's okay if we don't like things at first, that we can still have them around, we can still play with them. And this goes right into number 11. The most important thing I can tell you about getting your child to like more vegetables or like new foods is exposure. That is the biggest thing that research shows us, that the more that we expose our babies to real foods that we have in our house, over time, those repetitions pay off. It doesn't mean they're going to like it after the first time they see it, but it means that when we continue to expose our baby, not only in their chair, at the table, but in the market, in the kitchen, in the garden, talking about foods, exposing them in many different ways, the more likely they will be to eat it. And that takes us to number 12. Keep trying and don't stress. I know it's hard and I know you want your baby to be healthy. I tell parents and caregivers that teaching your baby to like new foods and new vegetables is like building a muscle. You can't build a muscle overnight and there are many ways to build muscles. So the most important thing is that we have that repeated exposure to build that muscle. We are involving them in the food. We are exposing them. We are taking the pressure off. We're talking about food. We're playing with it. We're giving them our food every single day as long as it's safe. We're giving them the chance to explore. The research shows us that when we let go of that control, when we give our baby the exposure to many different foods, many times that it will pay off. And your baby gets to play with food, see it, talk about it, and experience it without the pressure. They will become more interested and excited about eating those new foods, even vegetables. You're doing a great job. I'm here for you and we are in this together. For more baby feeding tips, check this one. Ha ha ha!